History Site Visit Report, Dandenong. Indigenous Australians. The Indigenous people who originally occupied on the land of Dandenong was the Bunurong and Wurundjeri peoples. The Dandenong Ranges were the meeting places for the two clans where conflict was prohibited. The name Dandenong is believed to come from the original Aboriginal word Tanjinong, meaning lofty mountains. 1830s to 1840s. The first wave of British settlers came to Dandenong during the 1830s to the 1840s. At the time, the land in the area were only available for lease, but not for sale. Although the buildings built by these early settlers have not survived, their names are commemorated in the name of the major streets, such as Lonsdale Street after Captain William Lonsdale from England, Macrae Street after Dr. Farquhar Macrae from Scotland, and so on. 1850s to 1860s. The 1850s to the 1860s were the time of the boom of migrant settlers coming to Dandenong. The number of migrants started to increase rapidly in the 1850s due to the gold rush, and the majority of them came from England, Ireland and Scotland. In 1852, the local government proclaimed Township of Dandenong, and this was followed by the beginning of land sales. People started to settle down in Dandenong, and the first churches and schools were also built during this time. 1870s to 1880s From the 1870s to the 1880s, Dandenong officially became a shire and started to develop some important components to centralise the location. On the 16th of May 1873, the local government proclaimed the establishment of the Dandenong Shire. The town hall was also built in the 1890, on the corner of Lonsdale and Walker Street. The town hall was an ambitious process to construct. The head of the city council went through a major struggle in order to have the building created. The town hall was constructed ahead of schedule and on the 3rd of September, a banquet and a fancy dress ball were held to celebrate the creation of the building. For 50 years, the building was a centre for local justice. A clock was added to the 83-foot tower in 1934. From 1939 to 1940, the building underwent major internal reconstruction, including an extension to its rear. The government offices were then transferred to Clough Street in 1968 and in 2006 the town hall went through yet another reconstruction where the drum theatre was added which became a state-of-the-art performing arts venue. 1900s to 1960s Dutch was the second largest ethnic group that settled in Dangnam during the early 20th century. They were among the first to build their own churches in the area and also opened their own Dutch club called the Lingberger Kangaroos in the 1970s. Italians arrived to Deng Dinang in the beginning of the 20th century. They formed Italian social clubs and participated in the life of Catholic churches in the area. In the 1970s, an Italian club called Frencia Zura was opened and became a sporting, culture, and recreational complex for the Italian community. Germans were the fourth largest overseas-born group that came to Dandenong by 1961, behind the British, the Dutch, and the Italians. In 1962, they built a Lutheran church on Peckett Street, which still remains today. Greeks began to arrive in the 1950s to 60s. They soon started establishing churches and community halls in the area. Until now, you could still see Greek Orthodox churches in Dangino. 1970s to present. On October 1970, the Commonwealth Government opened the Enterprise Migrant Centre, which accommodates about 1,000 people, and the maximum stay time allowed was one year. In December 1977, the first group of Vietnamese refugees arrived at the Enterprise Center. Since then, large numbers of migrants from Asia started coming to Dangino. Most of them were Vietnamese, Chinese, and Indians. Their influence is still visible in many neighborhoods, open up temples, shops, and restaurants. 
Afghans arrived in Dagenon during the Soviet-Afghan War in the 1980s and the Civil War in the 1990s. Dagenon soon became one of the biggest Afghanistan neighborhood in Melbourne, having over 3,000 Afghans living in the area. Now, Dagenon is a multicultural suburb with a population of over 30,000 people. From the census stats done in 2016 by the Australian government, it shows that the biggest ethnic group in Dagenon is Afghans with 9.9%, followed by Indians with 9.3%, and English with 8.3%. On the other graph, it shows that only 28% of the population were born in Australia, which meant well over half of the population was born overseas. Side visit. We decided to start our walking from Foster Street to Scott Street, and we observed many shops around which were owned by people from different countries, such as India, Africa, and some Middle Eastern countries. Most of the shops were groceries, clothing, and bakeries. We started our tour at the Museum of India. Its walls were decorated with images from Indian culture and religious images as well. After that, we visited Indian clothing stores and restaurants along the way. The stores were filled with traditional clothing like saris and Punjabi dresses. A large number of restaurants and grocery stores were located at the corner of the streets. These restaurants belong to people from different uh, states of India. There are some special cuisines in every state in India which are famous throughout the whole country and people going to taste them with the local recipe and in Fasir Street we observed Hyderabad, Jaipur and North Indian cuisines lined up. In between all the Indian shops and restaurants in Foster Street, the interesting part was some African shops that shows how the whole area is not surrounded just by one group of people and another community is engaged actively in the area. During our journey from Foster Street to Scott Street, we observed many Middle Eastern shops and restaurants as well. The restaurants had a variety of food from different Middle Eastern countries such as Afghanistan, Iran and Turkey. The grocery shops have a variety of products from African and Asian countries such as Palestine, Egypt, Lebanon, Nigeria and South African countries. The interesting part about our trip to Dandenong was the totem poles. There were six poles that each pole had a very unique and specific design on them. The drawing and carvings on the pole were flags and signs important to different communities in a religious way or something more social or artistic. The poles were representing the people and communities that used to live or are still living there in Dandenong. Toward the Scottish Street, we stopped at the Dandenong Uniting Church. They provided different languages services at church to make it more comfortable for people from different countries. And as the name reference and the services provided there, we believed that it was built with the purpose of bringing people from different cultures together. The church building is made of uh, red and yellow brickwork and the windows are constructed following Gothic architectural principles. Next, we went on a visit around the Dandenong market area. A bit of a background, the market was officially established on the 10th of October in 1866. It was served as a very important market for providing food and supplies for soldiers during the World War II. Then came the migration wave in 1970, allowing the market to be introduced to a variety of new products from different cultures. As we enter the market from the main entrance, we can see a variety of traditional Indian, Sri Lanka, indigenous Australian and Turkish clothing, paintings and arts, jewelries, accessories and household materials and equipment. Further into the market, we find ourselves in a large food court surrounded by different kinds of food stall. There are fresh cane juice, Indian food, Chinese dumplings, Vietnamese food, Turkish bakery, and many more Middle Eastern food. There was also a small Latin American cafe stall where it has all these interesting Latin American decorations of posters, flags, and paintings. As we exit from the entrance door of the market and walk across the closed street, there are small family business shops such as electronic repair shop, Asian grocery store, and more bakeries. What's interesting about these shops is that you can easily distinguish among them by just taking a look at the decorations and ornaments that they have. And some shop even has a label of their own language on their store's logo. 
Another interesting spot near the vicinity of Dandenong Market is the Southern Migrant Refugee Center. It has this very large panel right on top of the building that has a picture of uh, people from different ethnicity, which indicates the diverse and enriched culture of Dandenong. As we walk through the entrance door, we can see a blue cart just right on the left-hand side. It has a sort of traditional vintage Afghan coffee pot on top of it. And inside the center, it has a small Afghan statue of Shamama, which represents the evolution of blended ancient Afghan art and crafting style. There are also Chinese booklets and posters pasted all over the walls and the glazing doors.